Hello and welcome back to my channel. Saturday again, Slimming World, and we have just got back from group. Now I started the week with so many good intentions and uh, a plan. And my plan, as always, was to stick to plan, uh, stay within my sins and my healthy extras, and to enjoy my week. On Saturday evening last week, uh, Joe was going to ask her for some shopping and I said to him, can you bring me some fresh coconut? I'm just about out of fresh coconut. And he came back and he said they didn't have fresh coconut, but what they did have was tubs of fresh coconut with fresh pineapple. So I thought, yeah, that sounds nice, like a tropical mix, isn't it? So I looked at how much coconut, well, I weighed the coconut and decided to sin the extra coconut and eat the tub of coconut and pineapple because it's, it's, it's just a nice little tub. I ate it and I quite enjoyed it. But after I'd eaten it, I felt quite strange. Shall I say, I felt lightheaded. I didn't feel well. Well, I felt out, out of sorts. And I said to Jo, I don't know whether it's coincidental or whether the combination of coconut and pineapple really didn't suit me. Went to bed that night feeling quite lightheaded and giddy. Got up the next morning with absolutely no appetite. I felt like, I don't know what I felt like. I, f I didn't feel ill, I just felt totally out of sorts. So I started the day by making my porridge uh, with my almond milk, my blueberries and my banana. And then sat with it in front of me with a spoon in my hand and I couldn't even bring myself to take a spoonful of it. I just thought, I, I can't do this. So I made myself a coffee. I couldn't even put the coffee to my lips. I was like, what is wrong with me? I don't, all I can equate it to is, ladies, you'll know if you've ever been pregnant, at the beginning of pregnancy where everything smells wrong and nothing tastes right and you just can't bring yourself to drink. If, I remember when I was pregnant the first time, I was a tea drinker. I could not drink tea. I had to drink coffee. When I was pregnant the second time, same again, couldn't drink tea, had to drink coffee. When I was pregnant with Jo, I was fine um, uh, with coffee again, couldn't drink tea. And I've never been a tea drinker since, never, never ever got it back again. But I felt like that, everything just smelt wrong, the thought of everything was wrong. And believe me, at 61, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> so, but the whole day went on like that. I couldn't face my lunch. I couldn't face drinks. All I was doing was drinking water because I was conscious of staying hydrated. And when it did get to evening and Joe was back from work and everything, I actually managed to eat one pack of, um, I think it was um, a Sainsbury's vegetarian sushi. But even that took me about an hour and it had like six pieces of sushi in it. Not me at all. I am never, ever off my food. I'm one of these people who is likely to eat more when I'm poorly because I comfort eat in that situation and I want my Heinz tomato soup because it's poorly soup. But it was a very, very strange day. On Monday morning, I felt 50% better and I did get myself back on plan, but I dropped the coconut because I usually have coconut for a bee choice. Every time I thought about coconut, all I can taste is pineapple and it's even doing it to me now talking about it. So for the whole of the week, I actually dropped that healthy extra B choice of coconut and I chose to just have one healthy extra A and two healthy extra Bs. So my sum total of healthy extras all week has been three. I've had between 12 and a half and 15 sins all week. Because I've changed my breakfast and I've opted to have sprouted organic porridge instead of um, my usual cork and yoghurt mix, I'm saving two sins because I'm not having the full fat yoghurt. Now, some days I have added those two sins in and had extra 20 grams of avocado, so I pushed it up from 80 to 100. Other days I've just not bothered with them. A couple of days I used the frozen jacket potatoes from Aldi, which I like, and they are half a sin each. Although Naomi tells me that in the new magazine, there are Bannisters naked jacket potatoes now available in Iceland, and they are totally free. So if you don't like the idea of oil on jacket potatoes, um, go for the Bannisters ones. The reason we buy frozen jacket potatoes is because I was buying four uh, fresh jacket potatoes and then finding I'd eat one by the time I got around to fancying another one they were starting to sprout because of the house being so warm 
So that's why I've started buying frozen jacket potatoes, but I think I'll continue with it because it's handy just having the odd one jacket potato there when you fancy one. So yeah, 12 and a half to 15 sins, three healthy extras. And uh, apart from my very strange day on Sunday, quite, quite a normal week with regard to food. And I went to group this morning feeling comfortably my skin and got on the scale and got this. And Jo, can you show it? My five stone award. Which means that this week, um, because I went back to no sugar, I believe the only other major change would have been dropping a bee choice, which a bee choice, extra bee choices at maintenance is to help you maintain your weight and not continue to keep losing. So dropping that bee choice, 12 and a half to 15 sins instead of 15 every day, and being really conscious of going no sugar again, got me a three and a half pound weight loss this week. I was gobsmacked to say the least, really didn't expect that. Um, you see on my book, this sticker here. On the left. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The golden shot. Uh, this future sticker here is my five stone award. Fuchsia. Now, that, fuchsia. It's a fuchsia colour. It's red. <laughs> Linda told me it was fuchsia. No, the award's like bluey fuchsia. Ah, but the sticker's red. The sticker's red. Oh, because I asked her what colour the sticker was and she said fuchsia. But anyway, it's red. That is as far as I go um, with my weight loss. I don't want to go any lower than where I'm at today. I haven't got a target set actually in group. And I've talked with Naomi about it this morning and apparently I don't have to have a target set. It isn't a Slimming World rule that you have to have a target per se. As long as your consultant's happy with the weight you are today, as long as you're within the Slimming World boundaries, because they do have an indicator of how low you can go. I am still well over a stone above the lowest I could go at Slimming World. Um, I'm comfortable with that. So in my head, I have a target, which is eight stone 11. At the moment at eight stone eight, I'm at the bottom end of that target. I'm not out of it, but I choose not to set a target. And I'm going to explain, I think I've probably explained this before, but I'm going to explain again why. If I was fully sighted, like I guess most of the people who watch my videos are, and if I was a member and a target member at my group, I would love to be a social team member. I'd love to be actually on the scales. That would be my ultimate. And I think after two, nearly two, well over two and a quarter years at Target, I would be eligible to be on the scales, I'm sure. But because I can't see, I can't volunteer to do any of that. And Naomi and I have chatted about this and she knows how much I would be willing to help. And she also has said how much she would love me to be able to help. But there are some things in life that you just can't do. You don't have a choice. And this is one of the things I can't do. Now, I have always been brought up by my parents to be a giver, not a taker. That's the way my family are. My dad was probably the most generous man that's ever walked on this planet. And I cannot go to group every week and contribute nothing. I can't just go and keep taking. So my way of dealing with that so that I don't eat emotionally over it, which I think I would do. My way of dealing with that is to pay my £4.95 every week. Purely because I value what I have and I also really value my consultant. And I am aware that my consultant doesn't, she does this job because she loves it and she's perfect for the job. But she doesn't just do it out of the goodness of her heart. She's there before seven o'clock on a Saturday morning until after, you know, lunchtime. Cleaning that room, setting it up. Because sometimes, you know, we meet in a rugby club and sometimes, believe me, they walk into chaos. But we don't see that. We walk into a perfect room. We're, we're greeted well. Everything's laid out perfectly. Everything's available for us. We never have to order books in advance. There are stacks of everything we need. And we were told last week that the fruit and nut bars currently sold out of total stock at head office. But my consultant's got loads for us because she thinks about us and I think about her and I don't want to take advantage and just and I'm not saying this is right for anybody else this is about me if you go to group free because you're a target member 
that's where you should be go you know you don't you're not expected to pay you don't have to pay i'm not saying you should pay i'm just saying what i need to do because of the type of person i am and i need to pay so although i haven't got a target that's set in stone otherwise it would come up on the little machine that i didn't need to pay i know where my target is eight stone eleven my consultant knows where my target is slimming world head office don't need to know because i need to pay if that situation changes if something moves on something occurs something happens differently then i'll change it but for today i have to do what i have to do to keep this um this lifestyle ticking over and for me it's a many faceted lifestyle it's not just about what I eat. It's about how far I'm prepared to take it, how far am I examined to, how, how, am I prepared to examine why I eat what I eat, how far am I prepared to go to get to group every week because it isn't always easy. My group isn't on my doorstep. Sometimes I have to beg a lift, sometimes I'd have to pay for a taxi or two. I've got to be prepared to go to extremes to do it because it would be very easy for me, knowing the type of person I am, to say, Joe can't get me to group this week. I'm not going to pay £5 each way plus for a taxi. I'm not going. I can't do those sort of things. This is kind of like treating myself like a project. There are certain things I must put in place to keep myself doing what I'm doing and staying where I'm staying. And it's all about the type of person I am. And I cannot fall back into emotionally eating over anything. So I have to take... Um, and look at my part in everything I do today and do what's best for me. Right, a bit of interesting news at um, Slimming World today. I, I fancy this. There's um, pork skewers coming out on the 9th of April, which are like spicy, I think, pork meatballs on skewers for barbecues and grills. That's actually a dish that I would... I'm going to try that one. I'm, I'm not red hot on most of them, but I will try that one. And there are one or two other dishes coming out. Currently, if you buy three dishes, you get free blueberries, frozen blueberries. But on the 19th of April, that changes and you'll be getting six, I think they're called dessert-inspired Muller Lights, as your free gift. So yeah, there are new meals due out on the 9th of April. I want to go back a little, a little way to what I was talking about last week, about the sugar thing. Uh, I actually finished the book, Food Junkies, and I'm reading it again. There's so much in there to take on board. But I think one of the things that spoke very clearly to me was when it was talking about the different types of people. Who is a food addict? I am. I'm sure I am a sugar addict. Um, I cannot have a little bit of anything without then going on to have to have more. And it's like a battle going on within myself. And it's, it's almost like not just the two voices, it's more than that. It's almost like an obsession which then leads to an addic addiction because it's a physical reaction within my body. And I'm getting a better understanding of that from this book. I'm also understanding now that the different type of person from me is a person who could come along and join Slimming World and learn to eat in moderation. Now, I've been on my weight loss journey for eight years. I've now lost a total of 13 stone and six pounds. I still cannot do a lot of things in moderation. And I honestly don't think I ever will be able to. I'm not going to try and kid myself. If I opened a packet of crisps today, whether they were Walkers, somebody's own brand, um, what's those puffed things called? Hula hoop puffed, are yeah. they called? I've never had them, but that sort of thing. Hula hoops. I mean, I used to obsess about hula hoops. Monster puffs. Are they monster puffs? Monster claws. Bloody kettle chips. All those kettle <laughs> chips. They're the worst. Um, all those sort of things. I cannot stop at one packet. If you held a gun to my head, I could not stop at one packet. If you offered me £100, I'd rather have the crisps. So I don't go there. I cannot eat things like that anymore. If I was to open a box of Maltesers, or even one of those little mini bags of Maltesers, I cannot stop after a mini bag. I cannot stop after a box. I have been known to eat two boxes. These are things now that I'm learning. I just don't need to go there. Um, pizza, Pizza Hut pizza. Domino's you can keep it, um, frozen ones you can keep them, but if you put a Pizza Hut pizza in front of me, I'd eat it like a maniac. 
So I just can't go there. And I'm choosing not to go there. It's not because anybody says I can't. And now somebody said to me during the week, it was actually in an email, um, a, a close friend said to me during the week, but you talk about this and you say, I can't have crisps and I can't have Maltesers and I can't have pizza. How can you sit there and say for the rest of your life, you're never going to eat those things? Why should you have to do that, Jane? My way of thinking around this is I will never sit here and say for the rest of my life, I cannot have Maltesers. I cannot have crisps. I cannot have pizza. All I'll say is for today, I choose not to. Because today is actually all I've got. I don't need to be worrying about what I'm going to eat next week or next month or next year. You know, or thinking, oh, it's my birthday in three months. I'm going to have a pizza or a pizza. That's far too much deep thinking around food. I used to live like that when I was overweight. That's how I got to be 22 stone. So what I'm focusing on now very much in my life is only looking at today. And that works in all ways for me because if I made a decision to have a lunch off plan today, if I chose and said, let's, let's go out for lunch, Joe, my treat, I'm going to go to, I'll say Bill's because I like Bill's, or Coluccio's or somewhere, my treat, I'll pay, we'll have whatever we want. What do I then do? I choose to go back on plan for the next meal because I've learned enough in three years at Slimming World to know that that's the way it works for me. It's contained within the day. The old me was always focused and obsessed on what I was going to eat next. When I was eating my breakfast, I'd know what I was going to have for my lunch. When I was eating my lunch, I'd be thinking about what I was going to have for my dinner. I never actually enjoyed what I was currently eating because I was always living in the future. I don't do that anymore. I don't even think as far as what am I going to have for my lunch when I'm at breakfast time. I live in a way that I know we've got appropriate food in the house. And when it comes to lunchtime, I think, what do I fancy out of that appropriate food? I can't write a food plan for a week in advance. I've tried it. I fall down on day one. Because food isn't that big a deal in my life anymore. I don't need to be sitting here today with my pen and paper writing down what I'm going to have for my tea on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Because for me, and the type of person I am, and I know for a lot of people it does work, that is too much bloody thinking about food and it's too obsessive. Now, some people do it because they then go out, formulate their shopping list and buy what they need. I don't need to do that. I can shop any time I want. We live practically in an Asda hypermarket car park. It's not more than a two minute walk to get anything we need. And the funny thing is we don't really shop there. We shop in Sainsbury's most of the time, which is a 20 minute drive. But it's about what food you like. And I like a lot of the food that Sainsbury sell. I like a lot of food that Aldi sell. But I won't ever limit myself and be thinking on Wednesday afternoon, oh my God, it says spaghetti bolognese and I don't want that. Talking of food there, something else just came into my mind. One of the new meals at Aldi is a fish pie. And I know a lot of people will look forward to trying that. So I have to keep my life very much in today. That's enough for me to think about. So I won't sit here and say, for the rest of my life, I will never eat Maltesers. For the rest of my life, I will never eat pizza or pizza. But for today, I won't. That's as much as I need to worry about. I need to keep it simple. I woke, I woke up this morning <clears throat> about five o'clock. And uh, I was lying in bed and I was thinking, I mean, this is before I actually hit the Five Stone Award. And it, it actually is more relevant now. But I was thinking, do you know, pretty much I'm at a crossroads in my life. I'm at a crossroads with my weight loss journey because I knew I was more or less where I want to be because last week at eight stone 11 and a half was actually half a pound over what I consider to be my target. So I'm thinking you are where you want to be today. You're at a crossroads. I, when I think of a crossroads, I always picture a crossroads in the village where I lived where I, when I was a kid and I see this sort of four way posting signpost thing at the crossroads. And I feel like I'm coming out of this road and ahead of me is straight forward across the crossroads. To my left is some of my old bad eating habits. Let's say my sweet food, bad eating habits. To my right is my savoury food, bad eating habits. So the crisps are over here and the Maltesers are over here. The pizza's over here and the chocolate and the cake and stuff is over there. And I can choose, I can deviate, I can turn left and I can have a piece of birthday cake, or I can turn left and I can have 
whatever. Uh, I don't even know what I'd fancy. I can turn right and I can have a packet of crisps. But I know that if I do that, I'm not just stepping sideways on my plan and putting myself in danger because it's hard to stop once I've started. And I know other people find this. I know other people struggle in these ways because I've heard people say it on their videos. And I'm not judging them because we all do what we have to do. And then likewise, I know there are people in my group who can just have a packet of crisps. Oh, sorry, you're at 20 minutes. Okay. But for me, I'm at that crossroads now. Behind me is the 22 stone Jane. Ahead of me is the 8 stone 11, there or thereabouts Jane. And I just want to keep going straight forward. And when I come to the next crossroads, I want to keep going straight forward. And when I come to the next crossroads, I want to keep... I may deviate very occasionally because none of us are perfect. And it's not about being perfect. I could understand, you know, I want to be low sugar the majority of the time. But if I come on here one week and say, oh, I chose to have, I was in college years and I chose to have some of the artisan biscuits, which I really like. I don't want comments or dislikes on my vlogs saying, oh, you said you were sugar free. I'm not perfect. I'm not claiming to be sugar free 100% of the time, but I am very conscious about where sugar is hidden in food and what I choose to eat today. And I think that's it for me, being at this crossroads and just continuing on to the next crossroads, doing what I'm doing. You know, it may get a bit repetitive. I may keep coming on here every week and saying, I've gained a pound, I've lost a pound, I've gained half a pound, I've lost half a pound. That's going to be my journey. Um, but it'll be on Slimming World and it'll be sharing what new things I've learned about myself and it'll be sharing any new foods I've tried, liked or disliked. It's going to be a continual learning curve. It's not about perfection, it's just about progress. And I feel like today, hitting that five stone award on the day that I woke up thinking about being at that crossroads in my life has cemented, you know, in my head that I can keep doing this. I don't need to dramatically fall off plan. I don't need to be obsessing about where I'm going to be and what I'm going to eat in a month's time or when it's my birthday or am I going to come off plan for Christmas? Because the answer to that is already no. That's not my lifestyle anymore. I'm just loving, living this experience. And uh, feeling so well and so fit and so healthy. And finding my way through it. And that's why I'd encourage anybody as I finish my video today. Find your way through it. Don't try and do it your friend's way. Don't try and do it my way or... You know, pick up tips from everybody you come across, because that's what I do. I learn things from other people. But formulate a way that works for you and for your lifestyle. That way, this plan becomes your lifestyle. And it comes ahead of everybody, everything else. And so when things start to go pear-shaped in your life, or when something unexpected happens, you've got your plan in the forefront. Anyway, got to go, because we're going to run out of battery any second. But let me just remind us all, and I'm reminding myself, it works if I work it, won't if I don't. See you next week.